Happy Halloween, everyone! For this spooky day, we bring you a remastered and expanded version of one of your favorite video series, Scariest Disney Animatronics. And to do so, we have with us today huge Disney fan and expert, Francis Dominic. Hello, girls and gays and days. My name is Francis Dominic. Um, so a quick little tip tip about myself. Um, I more like sleep in planes than I do my own bed. I love theme parks and experiencing new adventures. I love using the world as my runway and you'll most likely see me shopping for crystals and talking to the moon. Now, Halloween is one of my most favorite holidays, even in front of Christmas. So let's get this started. Scar Animatronic, Once Upon a Dream Parade, Disneyland Paris Disney's Once Upon a Dream Parade was created for the 15th anniversary of Disneyland Paris. It premiered on March 31st, 2007 and originally had eight floats. This parade lasted until 2012 when it closed for a while to become Disney's Magic on Parade, which was basically the same parade but with two more floats and themed for the park's 20th anniversary. One of the coolest things about this parade, besides the floats of course, was that each float had a distinct smell. So the Pinocchio float smelled like wood wax, the princess float smelled like flowers, and the villain's float smelled like sulfur. And speaking about the villain's float, this this is one of the coolest floats in the parade. This float is dedicated to many villains. Escorted by a group of cast members dressed in flame and twirling fiery ribbons, the float featured Jafar in snake form, Hades, and Maleficent at the base of Bald Mountain, where Chernabog pointed a menacing finger at the parade viewers below. On the backside sat a massive Ursula, who taunted the poor unfortunate souls dancing before her. And on the side, the evil queen stood beside a bubbling cauldron, and an amazing animatronic puppet of Scar poked out from a mountain cave. Scar's movements and size made it look so scary and creepy. We love this float, and would love to see it in person one day. The Bride, Haunted Mansion Disneyland. Since the beginning, the Haunted Mansion has been a mix of stories and concepts that work together perfectly. Every story and character in this ride has been created by the most famous Imagineers in Disney history. With the pass of time, the mansion has had small and big changes, but one of the characters who has suffered the most changes is the Bride. The first sketch of this bride was created by Can Anderson, who based it on the picture of the Brown Lady of Rainman Hall. This picture was taken in 1936 and is one of the most famous ghost pictures of all time. After a while, when Mark Davis took over the project, he changed Anderson's concept, giving the character a clearer style, a darker face, and a cat. But in 1968, he decided to change his own concept and change the cat for a dog and the bride's face to a completely blank space with shiny red eyes. He called this new concept Beating Heart. Then he sculpted the character. He changed her again, gave her a kind of grim reaper style. The problem with this new design was that the most of the bride didn't look like a bride at all. And the idea of a bride had been in the Haunted Mansion plan since the beginning. So Davis decided to go back to his Gently Bride design. When the Haunted Mansion opened in 1969, the heart beating bride was located where we can now see the piano ghost. However, she was only there a month or two because when the hat box ghost was removed, she was changed to this old spot. But the bride not only changed her whereabouts, she also suffered some major design changes. Her face and eyes were changed many times and so was her dress. In 2006, the attic scene received a major overhaul and with this change, the beating heart bride was retired and Constance was in her place. So what happened to the beating heart bride? Well, she was safely taken to the Disney archives and was even on display in the treasures of Walt Disney Archives exhibit. Jack Skellington Glow in the Park Parade, Hong Kong Disneyland Glow in the Park Halloween Parade was a parade held during Disney's Haunted Halloween event in Hong Kong Disneyland. This parade debuted during Halloween time of 2007 and lasted until 2013 when it was replaced by the Villains Night Out Mini Parade. During its time, the parade had some changes like a new float for the finale or the addition of the Headless Horseman at the beginning of the parade. This parade had one of the most impressive floats in any Disney parade, the Jack Skellington opening float. Usually opening floats are smaller and not as detailed as the rest of the parade, but this one is a big exception. And we do mean big. The talking Jack Skellington was absolutely huge. He had a great range of motion too. His head and upper body could spin left and right and he could lean down to speak to guests as well. On the backside of the float, Sally and two dancers twirled to the music. Jack is such a cute character. 
but seeing him represented in this size and moving so fluidly earns him a place on this list. Shanghai Disneyland Roaring Rapids. Shanghai Disneyland is one of the most technologically advanced parks in the world. Almost every ride is filled with lots of technological marvels, and that is the case with Roaring Rapids. Roaring Rapids is a wild, out of control attraction that ends with an encounter with a mythological mountain guardian. In this ride, we set out to find out the source of the mysterious, echoing roars that can be heard behind the falls in Abu Taku Mountain. The ancient Arbori, people say that the source is the ancient crocodilian guardian Croc. Who protects the waterways from those who would do Adventure Isle harm. But the League of Adventures says this is all mythological nonsense. As you might expect, it is not. While we are on this expedition, a fallen tree diverts the river into a collapsed lava tube where one of the most impressive and astounding animatronics ever lies in wait. As the raft drifts into its rocky chamber, it turns to assess the noise, its glowing eyes narrowing the rage. The guardian huffs and sniffs, then thrusts itself forward emptying us as the raft drips helplessly closer. Close enough to feel its misty, humid breath, we have to duck wildly as the crocodilian snaps foot-long, razor-sharp teeth. Naturally, we manage to just barely escape the creature's jaws as the raft races down a lava tube into a geyser springs in the mountain's shadow. This animatronic is pretty impressive because of its size and movement, and even though its appearance is short, it is pretty scary. Wicked Witch, The Great Movie Ride, Hollywood Studios. Disney's MGM Studios opened on May 1st, 1989, and The Great Movie Ride opened with it. This dark ride took us through many scenes of iconic Hollywood movies, from musicals like Singin' in the Rain and Mary Poppins to gangster films like Public Enemy. There were also western scenes with Clint Eastwood, terrifying areas like Alien, where we saw the xenomorph, and adventure like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. We also went through films like Casablanca and Fantasia. This ride had it all. It was full of animatronics and even live actors. One of the scenes in this ride was Munchkinland from The Wizard of Oz. Here, Munchkins started to appear from various places and sang as they welcomed us to their home. Suddenly, smoke rose from the ground and an animatronic Wicked Witch of the West appeared asking who had killed her sister. And this animatronic was so impressive. It was the first A100 animatronic at the parks, and it was one of the scariest animatronics created by Disney at the time. This was because it was capable of moving like a human thanks to a system of joints in addition to having variable speeds. All this was controlled by hydraulics and pneumatic actuators. To program just a second of movements for these animatronics, it takes about eight hours of work. This new development of animatronics was created thanks to a collaboration between Disney and Sarcos, and this technology is only usable by Disney under an exclusive license. As a result, the Wicked Witch became one of the most lifelike and scary animatronics of all the attractions. On July 15, 2017, Disney announced that the attraction would close and be replaced with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. The ride closed on August 13, 2017. There have been rumors that say the animatronic was reused and it became red from Pirates of the Caribbean, but nothing has been confirmed by Disney. Harold, the Matterhorn Bobsleds Disneyland. The Matterhorn Bobsleds was the first tubular steel coaster in the world. For many years, the ride's interior was filled with poles, supports, and metal structures. But the ride was not themed at all. The infrastructure was a disguised as rock, and that was it. Then almost 20 years later, in 1978, the ride received its first significant refurbishment, and the mountain's interior was filled in. Imagineers made several small icy caves and tunnels, but the biggest addition to the ride was Harold, the intimidating abominable snowman took up residence inside the mountain as an audio animatronic figure and glowing red eyes encountered throughout the journey. According to the Disney Mountains, Imagineering at its peak, plans existed for Harold to be installed as part of the original 1959 attraction, but budget crunches and scheduling deadlines led the concept to be shelved for a while. Harold was added three times throughout the ride in the form of three terrifying animatronic figures. The first is visible from both tracks and the points where they divide to take separate paths, while the other two are visible only from their respective tracks. The Matterhorn was refurbished a few times after that, like in 1992 when the Skyway closed and the holes in the Matterhorn were partially filled, or the glimmering crystals and the Wells Expedition crate at the beginning of the ride were added. But in 2015, for Disneyland's 60th anniversary, Harold was replaced with an even angrier, scarier, and more lifelike version. This new version is a big improvement from the classic Yeti figure, making him one of the most frightening animatronics in Disneyland. 
Melanie, Phantom Manor, Disneyland Paris. Phantom Manor is one of our favorite rides at any Disney park. This attraction is Disneyland Paris' Haunted Mansion. The attraction was given a darker tone than the original, so the attraction told the story of Mr. Ravenswood and his beautiful daughter Melanie. When Melanie fell in love with a minor, Mr. Ravenswood vowed to stop their wedding. But before he could do anything, a terrible earthquake killed him and his wife Martha. Upon his death, a mysterious phantom appeared hanging Melanie's fiancé and cursing Melanie's spirit to forever wait for her lost love. The ride is full of scary animatronics, especially before the 2019 refurbishment. We've talked many times about Phantom Ravenswood and how his appearance was changed, but we've hardly ever focused on Melanie. And honestly, just knowing her story makes these animatronics bone-chilling. Before the refurbishment, in the loading area, the staircase was empty but now we can see Melanie standing still, looking at the rain outside and waiting. This is such a sad and creepy scene. Moving on to the next scene, before the refurbishment, we found an animatronic Melanie holding a candelabra and singing. You can't say that this animatronic is not terrifying. Hearing her sing such a sad song is chilling. After the refurb, this animatronic was replaced by a suit of armor animatronic. We can still find Melanie in the endless hallway, but now the phantom appears behind her, which makes this scene more terrifying. Next, in the ballroom scene, Melanie was relocated along with the phantom. We can see both in the balcony, the phantom standing directly behind Melanie again. Seeing the phantom over and over again standing near Melanie, letting us know that she will never be free gives us chills. Entering Melanie's room, there is a dying fire crackling in the fireplace. Then we see Melanie as an elderly lady, and she has given up looking for her long-lost groom. She sits weeping at a giant mirror filled with the shape of an enormous skull. After the refurb, instead of the skull, the phantom's face now cackles at Melanie from the mirror. One of the last major changes of the refurb was the pointing bride at the end. Before, we could see Melanie sacrificing her soul to save us from the phantom, helping us out of the manor as her body turned to bone and her wedding gown decayed. Now, the last time we see Melanie is in the mirror reflections. She appears in the doom buggies with us, asking if we would marry her. Melanie's story is heartbreaking, and that honestly makes these animatronics pretty creepy too. Captain Barbosa Pirates of the Caribbean, Disneyland Paris. Since it opened at Disneyland back in 1967, Pirates of the Caribbean has been a staple of Disney parks around the world. So much that there's a Pirates of the Caribbean ride in almost every Disney resort in the world. Not only that, but it inspired one of the most famous Disney movie series, Pirates of the Caribbean, starting with The Curse of the Black Pearl in 2003. After the film was a success, Disney decided to bring the movies to the ride. And so in 2006, Disneyland's Pirates closed to be refurbished. When it opened, Jack Sparrow had taken over the ride with three new animatronics. With this refurbishment also came a Captain Barbosa animatronic that replaced the pirate captain in the battle room and an added waterfall projection of Davy Jones' face in the cave, as well as modifications to the ride's lighting, audio, dialogue, and effects. These changes were also done to the Walt Disney World attraction, but it wasn't until 2017 when Disneyland Paris announced that the ride would go under refurbishments for the park's 25th anniversary and animatronics of Jack Sparrow would be added to two scenes. These two new Jack Sparrow animatronics are great and very similar to the ones found at Disneyland and Disney World. But there was another fantastic and equally terrifying animatronic that appeared after this refurbishment. A bone-chilling Captain Barbosa animatronic appeared, joining a skeletal crew in a scene unique to Disneyland Paris. The lifelike figure transforms from a human into a ghost pirate with a crack of lightning and thunder, complete with a maniacal laugh. The animatronic enhanced with the effects make this animatronic one of the best animatronics in the park, but also one of the scariest. Lava Monster, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Tokyo Disney Sea. Tokyo Disney Sea at the Tokyo Disney Resort is considered by many people the best theme park in the world. And it's no surprise then that it holds what also many people consider one of the best rides Disney has ever created. Hidden within the collapsed volcanic caldera of the park's 189-foot-tall icon, Mount Prometheus, is Mysterious Island, the living laboratory of Jules Verne's Captain Nemo. It's also the departure point for Journey to the Center of the Earth, the ride that we're talking about. Riders board earth-moving carts with diamond-tipped drills on the front and begin a descent deep into the earth through scenes inspired by the Jules Verne novel. This wild, off-roading dark ride through the layers of the planet leads through subterranean seas, bioluminescent forests, 
and stunning crystal caverns. However, when an earthquake cuts off the intended route, the cars are forced to divert into a previously undiscovered molten chamber. The ride passes through the treacherous and hilly terrain of the Earth's core, where enormous basketball-sized eggs drip with goo. Whatever laid these eggs must be pretty big, right? Suddenly, a massive spider-like leg begins slamming on the cavern wall through a hazy membrane. We've invaded a nest. As fire bellows, the car turns the corner where a flaming molten pool awaits, and inside that pool is the most advanced audio-animatronic Disney has ever created a molten millipede with spider fangs and glowing eyes with cooled, jagged rock forming an earthen crown on top of its head. This lava monster, presumably the mother of the eggs we disturbed, turns 90 degrees. Upon seeing us, her eyes narrow in anger as it hisses. The creature rears back, its legs and fangs gnashing as it snarls and screeches. Then, it lunges forward at the car, triggering an acceleration that blasts riders through the darkness, then up and out of the park's 190-foot-tall volcano icon. This encounter with the lava monster lasts only a few seconds, but it is pretty impressive and frightening, and definitely the highlight of one of the greatest rides at one of the greatest parks. Alien Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter Magic Kingdom The idea of creatures from another planet might not be as far-fetched as we once thought. In fact, one of you out there could have the next alien encounter. Every ride or attraction mentioned so far has had a scary element in an otherwise fantastic, adventurous, mystical, or funny attraction. But that's not the case with this one. The extraterrestrial alien encounter is terrifying from beginning to end. It opened at the Magic Kingdom on June 20, 1995, and it was supposed to be based on 20th Century Fox's movie Alien. It was later decided that the xenomorph from Alien would not be used, and Imagineers would have to come up with a whole new alien creature and a complete backstory. Still, they made it work, and they came up with the edgiest, most scary Disney attraction ever made. The attraction first started with a chilling and dark pre-show, where a simple demonstration of the technology, teleporting a fuzzy alien creature named Skippy from one side of the room to the other goes horribly wrong, leaving the little guy burnt to a crisp, wailing and in pain. This morbid and startling pre-show was an intentional check meant to weed out guests who couldn't have imagined that this terrifying attraction might actually terrify. Then, guests who dared continue on entered into the main demonstration chamber. Still arranged in concentric circles, guests now faced a massive glass tube fed by wires and pipes overhead. Locked in via shoulder restraints, the technological showcase would begin. The commander of XS Tech offers to beam himself to the theater, but something goes wrong. Here's where the animatronic comes in. The teleportation ray is intercepted by a bloodthirsty insectoid creature that gets beamed in instead. It's tall, with spider-like legs and a long body something like a praying mantis. It has gnashing fangs and glowing red eyes, plus transparent wings like a dragonfly. The creature shrieks horrifically and begins to bang its head and spindly legs against the glass tube. It makes quick work of shattering the glass tube and taking flight into the audience. As the lights sizzle, guests are left in pitch black darkness as special effects embedded in the seats, harnesses, and floor simulate the stomping alien growing closer growling in guests' ears and drooling down their necks. At the last second, the alien is lured back into the shattered glass tube as the excess technicians boost the power. This attraction was retired in 2003 to be replaced by Stitch's Great Escape. Giant Dragon Phantasmic Disneyland When darkness and light collide, the night becomes phantasmic. Since 1992, Fantasmic has been a fan favorite show. It debuted at Disneyland and became so popular that a second version with new scenes was created for Disney's Hollywood Studios in 1998 and a third version for Tokyo Disney Sea in 2011. This show gives us an inside glimpse at the dreams running wild in Mickey's mind. It is fantastic and beautiful. It's got an unforgettable soundtrack, fireworks, dancing fountains, pirate ships, princesses, and more. But it is not without its terrifying moments. While Mickey's dreaming, 
the Disney villains see the opportunity to get inside his dream and turn it into a nightmare phantasmic. Mickey is tempted by the magic mirror to enter the darker realms of his imagination, and he accepts the challenge. So the mirror traps Mickey inside its dark steps. Here, the evil queen, disguised as an old hag, calls all the villains to take over. She is joined by Ursula and Chernabog, and they all join forces to summon Maleficent. When Maleficent arrives, she threatens Mickey and then transforms herself into a giant dragon. This animatronic is 45 feet high and breathes fire onto the river. At first, you can only see the dragon's piercing yellow eyes, but as soon as the lights rise and the fog is gone, we can make out the dragon's form as it cackles and looks at the crowd. Finally, the dragon blows a stream of fire onto the river below, igniting the entire Rivers of America lagoon. This is one of the most spectacular animatronics on earth and it is pretty imposing and frightening. In the end, Mickey vanquishes the dragon at the end and saves his dream. Hopefully, we'll get to see Fantasmic's return soon. Dragon, the Dragon's Den, Disneyland Paris. Disneyland Paris is a park that is full of hidden gems, and one of these gems is hidden right under the castle. This area is known as the Dragon's Lair. When the park was being built, Imagineer Terry Harding was given the task of designing the Dragon's Lair. She came up with the idea of the dragon, the cavern, and its story. Many people think that the dragon beneath the castle is Maleficent, when in fact, it is Merlin's dragon. When Merlin was young, he crossed paths with the young dragon and they soon became friends. Years later, they realized that they were supposed to be enemies, but they didn't mind and they continued being friends. When Merlin retired, the king gave him and his dragon a home in the castle. Merlin opened up a shop and the dragon moved into the cavern below. When Harding started to design the dragon, she decided to look at the dragon that could be seen in the Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour at Tokyo Disneyland and created a copy but she added the parts that were not visible to guests in the tour. At first, Walt Disney Imagineering had intended the dragon to be a static figure, but Harding was having none of it and decided to personally talk to Tony Baxter and convince him that the dragon had to be an animatronic and that it had to be in constant motion. And thankfully she achieved this and we got one of the scariest and most impressive animatronics at the parks. In the original design, the dragon would not be wearing a collar, because that would not make sense, being that the dragon was Merlin's friend. But as we can see in the final version, the dragon ended up wearing one. It can be seen calmly sleeping, and while it sleeps, we can see the movements in its tail and paws. This is an amazing animatronic and one of the biggest ever created by Imagineers at 89 feet long. It is such an amazing experience to be able to see this animatronic up close and it can be very frightening and imposing. There were several techniques used to make the experience at the lair not too frightening for small children. And by highlighting certain parts of its head with lighter colors, the dragon also appears less frightening. But honestly, the animatronic is still pretty scary. Special thanks to Francis Dominic for being with us today. Make sure to check out his content. And now it's time to announce the winner of the Fan Art Challenge. First of all, we would like to thank you for all the amazing pieces you guys have sent us. We're going to post all the entries on both of our Instagram accounts. The winners are Gabs Urias with this awesome art featuring Walt and various animatronics that we have covered, Taylor Rain and these two amazing pieces featuring Walt, Olivia with this outstanding piece featuring Walt with Submarine Voyage's Sea Serpent. And finally, Pinky with this awesome piece featuring Walt in this amazing pose. Please check out our Instagram to see all the entries. Links in the description and in the comments. Happy Halloween!